Hi, in this episode, I'm going to show you how we could use the special Portrait Polka AI tool that's in Luminar AI Update 4, and we're going to fine-tune it to get these straggly hairs and to make this image look absolutely amazing. Let's see what we can accomplish in 10 minutes or less, starting now. Hey guys, welcome. Yes, Gary, it's a... Uh, uh, Jerry, it's good to be back. Well, here we are with a beautiful image. And if you look, look at the, the bulk in the background. That is just absolutely gorgeous. But guess what? It was added. So we added that portrait bokeh, you, or bokeh using portrait bokeh AI. Now, overall, I love how this looks. This looks absolutely amazing. However, if you notice, when we hover over the image, this is the mask that AI created. And what I want to do is take you through some of the advanced features of the new Portrait Bokeh AI tool. So this looks great, but we have straggly hairs all the way around um, on the sides here. So when I remove this, it kind of looks like she was cut out, put a hairnet on her, and slap her up against this background. I mean, it does a great job, but we can make it look even better. So let's come over here and check out these different tools we have available. So focus is going to bring that, it's gonna paint in red. We'll put it that way. So it's gonna draw focus to the image. Defocus is gonna basically um, deselect the red and it's gonna make the background up here and then, of course, restore. Now, what restore is going to do, it's going to restore it back to the original mask that AI created. So those are the three brush controls, focus, defocus, and restore. So what I want to do is I want to defocus right around the edges a little bit. And I can do that by applying a really, really low opacity because it if I use it at 100%, 100 then it's going to look like beautiful uh, bokeh, beautiful bokeh, up. Oh, now the original image and then the hair. We want to blend it together. Now, we could do down in here the edge correction, but keep in mind, edge correction is when we're not selecting the edges properly. Here we have a perfect selection of the edges. It's too perfect. We want to muddy it up a little bit. So I'm going to use my pen. You could use a mouse. But what I want to do is paint at opacity, let's say around 11. And I want to go around the hair and just bring back some of those flyaway hairs. And you'll notice what's happening is that it'll have a transparent um, mask going around it, and I'm going to do the same thing over here. And notice it's bringing back some of that hair. Yes, Russell, we all survived Chicago. It's awesome. Hello from Holland. All right, so, ooh, look at that. So I'm going to do before and after. Here's before. Here's after. So we notice there's some hairs up in here I want to bring back and, and what I'm doing is I'm going over the section a couple times because it's building it up and, and I'm flicking it like this with a mouse you do the same thing I don't want to keep it there and press it all the way down I want to make it more like a feather where again I'm flicking the um, the tool good let's see how that looks Oh, yeah. Do you see that? So you see how it's bringing back some of the flyaway hairs. Realistic. Beautiful. All right. A little more. And there we have it. All right. So the tool itself is pretty self-explanatory. We, we we have the, the top part. And again, this section is on more... I'm understanding the advanced features of Portrait Bokeh AI. So we already have the amount. What the amount is doing 
is the amount is giving me that blur in the background. So think of that as your depth of field, all right? And then the depth correction is what's giving me these geometric shapes. So this is what it would look like without that depth correction. And we're going to give it a few seconds for it to generate. And you'll notice that when this is illuminating, that right there means it's thinking. All right? So without depth correction, notice I'm not getting those beautiful geometric shapes. All right? So, but you are getting, or we are getting, the hairs, the flyaway hair is looking more realistic. But when we add that depth correction to it, I'm not, I absolutely love and adore the geometric shapes. I mean, to me, th th that's what portrait, that's what bokeh is all about. So let's zoom out and view, fit screen. And here it comes. Give it a second. Look at that. How absolutely gorgeous that looks. And don't forget, once, once we do this, let's come back and we can come up here to the Enhance AI and we can add it. And notice I added it before I did the Portra Boca. So what's really cool about Luminar AI is there's no starting at any point. Like in Photoshop back in the day, you'd start with A, B, C, D, and you have to go all the way through, and if you make a mistake down here, or let's say up here, you have to start all, all over again. With Luminar AI, we can start with Portra Boca AI, or we can end with it. It doesn't matter when we add it into our workflow. Now, me personally, I like to put it in towards the end, and the reason for that is it's a very complicated and very intense tool so it does take time for it to generate. So I like to get the image looking really good the way I like it, then add it. So it, only, so it only has to regenerate once or twice instead of always regenerating when I'm adding other tools, all right? So in this particular scene, uh, excuse me, I already cropped the image the way I like it. You can see it right here. And I already, under the light tool, I did add my special, a little bit of the uh, toning into the black. Here it is. I enhanced the black uh, tones and bumped up the white tones just a bit. Then I came down and applied the portrait bokeh. Now, keep this in mind, too, is on the, the background here, I can darken the background a little bit or I can brighten it, I can enhance the highlights of the glow in here, and we can also change the warmth of the, the color temperature in the back. We can make it a little bit cooler or bring out a little bit more warmth, all right? So that's our Portrait Boca AI. And again, after teaching in Chicago, thank you so much, Karen. After teaching in Chicago, and I showed a lot of these examples, people would often ask, well, when would you apply this? So if you notice, this image here was shot, let's see, at, at an 85 millimeter lens. It was shot at F16, and I did that just to prove a point with it. In fact, what I'll do is let's go to images on the same date. So what I wanted to do was show show everyone that this is what Portrait Boca, or I'm sorry, this is what Boca looks like straight out of the camera, all right? So this is what it looks like shooting uh, 1.4, shooting um, at f1.4. That's what it looks like, and we moved the subject slightly so I was shooting down the path. So to get the portrait, to get the bokeh like this, we need depth of field. So we need the subject away from the background and we need light to come in. 
So this is straight out of the camera without any editing. What we did, or what I did for you, was I purposely shot it at F16 just to show you how we can add how we can add it into our scene. Now, when would we shoot? When would we shoot at F? Let's say eight to F11. What if we had let's say uh, eight to ten uh, family members in the scene, and we want this portrait bokeh or the bokeh in the background? Well, traditionally we couldn't do that because with that many people in an image, we have to shoot at a higher f-stop, f8, to f11. So we're not going to get the bokeh in the background. This opens up an entire new area for us to photograph because now we can photograph at f16, which you just saw, and still add a, a bokeh to the background. So I can't wait to experiment with couples and with family members and just get a group of people together, photograph them like I normally do at a higher f-stop, and then try to apply the, the portrait bokeh to see the effect. So those are times when you'd want to apply the portrait bokeh AI um, to an image. Another time is if you have a lens that doesn't stop down to f2.8 or 1.4, that's a perfect opportunity to use this. So I hope that helped everyone. And again, I just absolutely love what the engineers did with the uh, bokeh in these images. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'll try to stick around for 10 minutes and answer any of those questions. Lon Fidelli, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you at the next coffee break.